So, you're coming from the FDM printing site, but heard about all the cool SLA printer stories and want to try out resin printers too, huh? Or maybe you're an architect, designer or an engineer who is a beginner to the 3D printer world and you're confused, wondering if you should get an FDM or SLA printer. What's better? Is it worth it? Is it complicated? Well, SLA printers are a little more complex compared to FDM printers. So before I get to the 5 main SLA printers, I gotta teach you some cool stuff. And look, if I explained everything in this video, it will take more than 30 minutes. You don't have 30 minutes, but you do have 4, right? Instead, I will sometimes give you keywords to type in YouTube to check certain videos out that will give you all the knowledge and tricks you need. But in the next 4 minutes, I'm going to give you an impressive crash course that will get you up to speed which normally takes weeks to learn. You're about to save a lot of time and confusion. First of all, let's highlight the differences between FDM and SLA printers. FDM printers are more simple, cheaper and have a lot of filament types, mainly plastic. SLA printers use resin and are a lot more smooth slash accurate. Now a common question people ask is which one is faster? It has an interesting answer. I will take an example to two extreme opposites. Imagine we have two build plates, one FDM and one SLA, and we want to print a huge cube. SLA printers use a laser which moves very fast and it will print the whole first layer almost instantly. But as you see the FDM printer, it has to do it line by line and it takes some time. Even if SLA finishes faster, it has a few seconds downtime for the resin to cure a bit before starting the next layer. But nevertheless, it still beats the FDM. Now imagine the opposite. We want to print a thin wall. As you see, the SLA printer finished again in no time. But this time, the FDM printer is also done quickly. Once FDM is done, it instantly starts with the new layer and then the new layer, compared to the resin printer, which has a downtime, making FDM faster in this example. So SLA printers are slower with more layers, but faster with more print surface. If you want to know more about about FDM printers, then check this video out here. Now let's dig into SLA printers. Groot says that resin printers have 6 main points to check. A point SLA printer manufacturers tend to leave out is that most SLA resin is a little toxic, so you will have to take precautions to avoid the smell, fumes and uncured resin parts. Type SLA safety on YouTube to find a quick guide. Next thing to know is cleaning and curing. Cleaning means removing the extra resin goo that's on your figure. You do this by using 99% alcohol. Then for curing, you have to use ultra violet light to strengthen the model so it reaches optimal properties. Either buy a machine, make a DIY machine, or use the sun. You don't need to buy a wash and cure, but I provide a link for a good one in the description. It saves a lot of time and effort. Otherwise, type cleaning and curing resin print on YouTube. Third thing to know about is the vat and FEP. The vat is where you store your resin. FEP is a thin and smooth layer that goes between your resin and your screen. It's thin so that UV light passes through smoothly and and accurately. There are types of FEP, like NFEP and FEP 2.0. Make sure to clean the FEP every once in a while using alcohol and don't scratch it. Apart from that, you need to make sure you level the bed. This is the bed. And then you're good to get slicing. The most famous slicer for SLA printers is the Cheeto Box. Lychee is another newer but very effective one to try out too. A common place where people tend to make mistakes that cause failed prints is with supports. Type how to build SLA supports on YouTube. And the final point, resin printer's resolution. It's so high that you might not even see the layers, but resin quality depends on the printer screen. Older types have LCD screens but are quickly going out of trend. Instead, monochrome LCD screens are the new trend. You can get 2K, 4K, 6K and 8K monochrome screens, but these numbers are more for marketing purposes. Here is an example. A 5x3 inch screen with 4K resolution means that there are 4000 pixels and 5 inches, but that's the same with a 15x9 inch 4K screen. You see the difference? The pixels are now stretched out. So in reality, both options are 4K, but the first option is three times more accurate. 
To measure true resolution, just divide screen size by the number of pixels, and you get microns. 50 microns is the average resolution for a budget SLA printer. The lower, the better. Okay, guys, was this helpful? Do you feel a little less confused? Now that you're up to speed, let's talk about the 5 best beginner SLA printers in 2022. Links can be found in the description below. I also have a quick summary chart later that will help you know which SLA printer is best for you. And coming up in number 5 is the best budget option, the Elugu Mars 2 Pro. Elugu is currently the most famous SLA manufacturer. They have a lot of printers. Most famous are the Elugu Mars 1, 2 and 3 and Mars Pro 1, 2 and 3. Each has different pros and cons. Main differences are size and screen resolution. Now, Mars 2 Pro is a great entry option. It's a 2.5K monochrome SLA printer with a build size of 5.1 by 3.1 by 6.3 inches or the following in centimeters. This is quite small but normal for SLA printers. This gives it a total resolution of 50 microns. For under $200, 50 microns is impressive. Another benefit of monochrome printers is that they are also faster. This printer takes around 2 seconds per layer exposure to cure resin, compared to the older version which took around 8 seconds per layer. Thus, if the printer is being used for a fourth of the time, its overall lifespan is going to be 4 times higher too. Print speeds are between 30 and 50 millimeters per hour. Like most SLA printers, the Elugu Mars has an enclosure box with a silicon resin seal to keep fumes contained. But unlike most other printers, this option has a built-in carbon box to absorb and filter the resin odor, making it smell much less and much healthier. Now keep in mind that resin odor depends highly on the type of resin you get. Some are stinkier than others. The vat is made out of aluminum, which is great, since other similar budget options have plastic ones. Elugu has a 1 year warranty on the whole printer and 6 months on the 2.5K LCD, but not the FEP film. But anyways, Elugu gives you 2 extra FEP sheets to replace the original when needed. Once you get the hang of this printer, you will find it even easier than FDM printers. It has less settings. This option is great if you are on a budget and you don't care too much about printing print size, just print quality. Another similar option to the Elugu Mars, yet even cheaper, is number 4, the Creality LD002H, another 2.5K monochrome printer with a size of 5.12 by 3.23 by 6.3 inches, very very similar to the Elugu. So, micron resolution is also going to be the same at 50 microns, and another similarity is that it has an air filtration system. Great, the LD2H has a little more flux fluctuating speeds between 1 and 4 seconds per layer. And as prices fluctuate from time to time, the Creality LD2H might prove to be more cheap than the Elugu Mars 2 Pro at some points in time. Since both are quite similar in overall quality, I would suggest you go for the cheaper available option to you. Creality and Elugu Mars both use the Cheetobook slicing software, which is the best free software you can get. Now, we are going to move up to a little higher budget but a lot higher resolution. Option number 3 the Voxilab Proxima 4K monochrome printer. When most companies make their 4K printer, they tend to increase the print size too, which is quite nice, but it also means that you are not getting double resolution either. So I left out the larger options, as they tend to get more expensive. If you really want a large option, you can search for the Elugu Saturn, but this printer size is 5.11 by 3.2 by 6.1 inches. So nice, size remains small. That means that the 4 4K print quality will be much better than 2K. By the way, if you are wondering about 8K printers, it's quite hard to tell the difference in details between a 4K and 8K printer without a super zoom lens. Thanks to Voxilab's full grayscale anti-aliasing and a 405 nanometer wavelength of UV light, also present in the previous options, you get a nice boost in clarity on your prints too. Voxilab provides lifetime of technical support and a nice one-year warranty 
20, once again supporting G2Box. And with quite a large community base, this printer is a good way to start 4K printing. Next up is the second most famous SLA printing manufacturer, the Anycubic Mono 4K. Once again, the Mono 4K has a small build size, 5.2 by 3.14 by 6.5 inches. So it has a resolution of 35 microns. This is very impressive and will definitely show on your builds, boosting a high contrast ratio of 350 to 1. Build speed is similar to previous options at 50 mm per hour, but again, if you want bigger size and are willing to sacrifice some resolution, then you can think about the Monocubic X instead, the big brother, but price goes up quite a lot. Personally, I would suggest you start with a smaller build size until you're more experienced, and if you're liking resin printing, then you can go for higher end options later. You will most likely not be changing your printers because of a malfunctioning error, as these printers tend to last quite a long time when handled with care. What's cool about the Anycubic Mono 4K is that its UV lamp power can be adjusted between 30 and 100%, meaning that it not only supports normal resin, but also special resin, making it compatible with more materials and environments. This option comes with the Anycubic Photon Workshop Slicer, but if you're worried about the slicer not doing the job right, you can get your supports done in Cheetobox. Then save it as an STL file, the main file used in slicers, and open it up with the Photon Workshop Slicer. That way, with one extra step, you get to have perfect supports, at least until Cheetobox adds the mono into its collection. Warranty on this option is practically non-existent, so you might want to think about getting an extended warranty. Some users had some troubles getting their build to stick to their build plate. And finally for number 1, yet another printer from the Elugu Mars series, the Elugu Mars 3. With the Mars 3, you finally get a bigger build size, 5.6 by 3.5 by 6.8 inches, or the following in centimeters. That is a 15% increase in build size, with a resolution of 4098 by 2560 pixels. So, you get a bigger build size and slightly lower build quality compared to the last option. Nevertheless, the figurines made using this printer turn out to be awesome, most likely because of the new free-form COB light source, helping achieve above 90% light uniformity. The printer also has improved light decay resistance, making it have a very long service life. The Z-axis has been improved on this printer to make it have stability of up to 0.001 millimeters or 10 micrometers, which is very impressive. Build plate adherence is also something that has been improved on. Thanks to the sandblasted plate, you get more adherence to the model, so models don't fall off of the printer. FEP film no more, this printer has a PFA film. This new film is even more smooth and somehow manages to protect support from being broken too, reducing failed prints. Same as the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, this option uses Cheetobox, but they even go beyond that and provide you with a free one-year use of Cheetobox Pro. As for the warranty, you get a one-year warranty. Some options in this list come with a toolkit and extra gloves. Here is a quick chart showing you exactly which printer to get based on what you need. And I hope this video was helpful. If it was, throw a like and subscribe for more 3D printing advice. Like this video here or this one and have a great day.